In this video, I'll be taking the tools that we've learned so far and quickly create an entire human body base mesh. This method of creation will give you ideas on how to save time and quickly create virtually endless possibilities for designing and quickly block out the basic shapes of a design that you have in mind to create and later add to with sculpting brushes and other features in ZBrush Core. In the previous videos, I've started to create what would be the upper torso of a human character, so let's continue to build off of these Z-spheres to complete a basic human body. While building with Z-spheres, in many cases, working with symmetry will help to speed up the modeling and sculpting process. So I'll make sure that my symmetry is enabled by checking that my cursor is displayed on both sides. Be sure to check this at the beginning stages to avoid a loss in symmetry later in this process. If you find your symmetry is disabled, press the X key on the keyboard to disable and re-enable the symmetry option. We can also check by navigating to the transform palette here and be sure that the activate symmetry button is enabled here. Pressing the X key on the keyboard will toggle this activate symmetry button here. To get started, I'll quickly add more Z-spheres to the armature. To speed up the process while using the draw, move, scale, and rotate options, we can use the keyboard shortcuts to quickly switch between these options. By hovering over these four buttons here, you'll see that the Q key is mapped to draw mode, the W key is mapped to the move mode, the E key is mapped to the scale mode, and R key for the rotate mode. By selecting draw mode and positioning my cursor at the symmetry line, which is displayed when the cursor turns green, I can now build off of the root Z-sphere at the perfect center to add a single Z-sphere for the neck, and I'll also add another for the head. For further adjustments, press the W key to access move mode, to pull up the head and neck, while also adjusting the placement by rotating around the canvas at different angles and now press the E key on the keyboard to select the scale option and now click and drag upwards to scale up the size of the head. For areas where a Z-sphere is less visible, like the neck here, by hovering your cursor over the Z-sphere, you'll see a small red circle signifying the center of the Z-sphere, which can help to make sure you are selecting an individual Z-sphere with the transform modes. Let's continue on down the body and press Q to switch back to draw mode and add a Z-sphere for the torso. I'll switch to the move mode to pull this down into place. With the torso in place, let's finish off this character and add the legs. When adding legs for a humanoid design like this one, your first thought may be to simply use the draw mode to add two Z-spheres like so, and use the move mode to pull these down. However, let's take a look at the geometry preview by opening up the adaptive skin menu and clicking preview or pressing the keyboard shortcut by pressing A on the keyboard. By toggling back and forth between the Z-spheres and Geometry Preview, this can help us to decide whether or not the final mesh will be good for sculpting. With the Z-sphere chains pulled down in this way, the geometry is being constructed from these Z-sphere chain shapes here, and in this case doesn't leave us much room for sculpting the waist of the character and will require extra work later in the sculpting process. Let's exit preview by pressing A on the keyboard and use our Z-Sphere armature tools to apply a different approach. I'll press undo to remove those Z-Spheres, and instead I'll insert two Z-Spheres to represent the hip joints like so, and now add additional Z-Spheres to build off of these for the rest of the leg. Using the move mode, I can pull these down to the proper length, and now use draw mode to click and add Z-Spheres for the knees. An additional process that may help when adding and moving a new Z-sphere, I'll undo those additions to demonstrate. When using draw mode, first click and drag to begin adding and scaling up this Z-sphere like so. While continuing to hold your cursor down, press Ctrl and Shift on the keyboard and continue to drag your cursor outwards like so. What this will do is add a Z-sphere and also match the new Z-sphere size to the Z-sphere we are drawing on top of, and also, as we continue to drag outwards, you can see this will grow away from the original Z-sphere. This technique can reduce the back and forth selection process between draw and move mode, and is a great feature to use when building things like arms, legs, 
fingers, and toes that have a specific size that we would like to match this z-sphere to. I'll use this technique to add the connection from the knee to the ankle, and also add an extension for the feet. With these z-spheres placed at the hip joint, this will allow us to add an extra point of articulation, and now press R on the keyboard to access rotate mode, and this will give us a much better point of articulation to rotate the leg chain in a more realistic way. I'll put this z-sphere armature in preview mode by pressing A on the keyboard to quickly assess what else may be needed to create. We can use this geometry as it stands and use this nub of geometry to later sculpt the feet, or we could continue to add the toes in the same way that we've done with the fingers in the previous video. So let's quickly take the time to add the toes. I'll exit preview and switch back to draw mode. We can draw in a z-sphere for each toe joint and also keeping in mind the size of the toes as they taper from larger to smaller. With each joint z-sphere roughly set to the same size, I can now use the draw mode technique by clicking and dragging and pressing Ctrl and Shift while dragging outwards to quickly grow these z-spheres out like so. When completed, we can assess the overall shape of our character and make any final adjustments if needed. I'll continue to use the move, scale, and rotate modes to adjust the individual z-spheres, which can help us to quickly adjust the body type of the character. By rotating to different angles and using the rotate mode, I can adjust the angle of the body parts to adjust the posture to create a more heroic body type and overall balanced stance of the character. While using scale mode, we can hover our cursor over a chain link for example, the shoulder chain here, and click and drag to scale up the entire arm. This method can help us in adjusting the proportions of an entire chain, which could help us in designing a more stylized character, and also will allow us to scale up the chain for the arms, legs, and head. Also using scale and move mode to adjust the individual z-spheres, remember to set your draw size to one while adjusting individual z-spheres in this way, to avoid moving multiple z-spheres within the brush radius. Another method for adjusting chains of z-spheres is by using an additional function with move mode. While in move mode, let's rotate to the front view of the armature, and if we want to move the entire arm, for example, further away from the torso to create more space, simply click on the z-sphere at the top of the chain that you would like to move together, and for this example, I'll click on the shoulder z-sphere to make sure that's selected. And this will now also show the chain link connection skeleton. Now, press and hold the Alt key on the keyboard, and also click and hold on the top link of this chain, and now drag your cursor in the direction you would like to move the chain. This method allows us to move the entire chain of z-spheres that are connected within this chain link, without changing the scale of those z-spheres. This feature is very beneficial for moving larger chains of z-spheres, and we can apply this method at different parts of the arms, as well as legs, and other parts of the body. So with this completed, let's open up the Adaptive Skin menu, and click Preview to check the geometry we're going to create for sculpting. Now often the default resolution settings for our preview mesh will be more than enough for us to jump right into the sculpting process. However, if you find the need to adjust this further, we have a couple options to do so. To adjust the overall resolution of our mesh for sculpting purposes, we have the density slider and the dynamesh resolution slider. The density slider will allow us to change the overall density of the entire mesh. This slider will update the mesh automatically when clicking and dragging on the slider. At lower levels, this will create crisper faceted edges, and at higher levels, will add overall smoothness to the mesh density. The Dynamesh Resolution slider will also control overall smoothness, and will deal more effectively with the resolution of the mesh when adding higher or lower amounts of geometry. When changing the Dynamesh Resolution slider, to view the changes, we first must click to disable the preview button and re-enable it like so, or toggle by pressing the A key on the keyboard. A higher resolution means more surface details can be achieved with our brushes, which we can test by adding a sculpting stroke with a standard brush. 
A lower resolution means less surface details, and also, depending on how low the DynaMesh resolution is adjusted, this may also create a loss of detail for the overall volume generated from our Z-Sphere armature. Now, there are many benefits to beginning the sculpting phase on a mesh at lower resolutions. However, we need to be sure we find a resolution that will hold the volumes from our Z-Sphere armature in order to keep all of the shapes we've worked to create with Z-Spheres. In this case, I've found that by setting my density to 4 and setting my DynaMesh resolution to 160, and I'll click A on the keyboard to toggle the preview off and back on to view the final mesh, and I now have the final settings to move on to the next phase. Once you find the settings that work best for your Z-Sphere armature, we can now click Make Adaptive Skin to create our final mesh to now be sculpted on and further refined. By clicking this button, it's going to create a new mesh up here in the toolbox. So I'll select the skin underscore Z-Sphere underscore one in the toolbox and open up the subtool palette to click rename and give this a unique name. If we close the subtool palette and now open up geometry DynaMesh palette, you can see the mesh will automatically have the DynaMesh mode enabled and the resolution setting is preset to the settings chosen in the Z-Sphere Adaptive Skin menu at 160. If you're unfamiliar with what DynaMesh is and how to properly use sculpting brushes in ZBrush Core, I recommend you take the time after viewing this tutorial series and visit zclassroom.com where you can view tutorials focused on showing you how to properly use all of these features together. That covers the basic Z-Sphere applications to creating an entire human body. I'll now continue on with the sculpting process and designing my character. If you need ideas or inspiration on how to build your own armatures, you can navigate to Lightbox, Project, Z-Spheres, and here we have a library of pre-built armatures. Double-click to load these projects and begin the editing process. And using this method, we can design all different styles and shapes at a basic level. Following these same techniques, you can transform an existing armature, or you can start from scratch, which can then later be sculpted and refined with the brushes and many other features in ZBrush Core. As always, thanks for watching this entire series on ZSphere armatures, and happy ZBrushing!